Precision medicine is an interesting term. For me, it's really this uh, push toward figuring out how do we personalize medicine, how do we make it more precise. We're all at risk for something genetically, but we often don't know it. You get a little inkling from your family history, but it doesn't tell you the whole picture. I think precision medicine ties together strategies, it ties together technologies, and now what it's beginning to tie together is the third big area of artificial intelligence. Precision medicine is a broad term that can apply to every stage of a person's health journey. From preventing disease, to early disease detection, to personalized treatment plans. But what exactly is precision medicine? In essence, precision medicine personalizes healthcare. Unlike the traditional one-size-fits-all approaches, precision medicine combines strategies from diverse fields like genomics, metabolomics, and various biomedical data sciences. It involves analyzing an individual's genetics, lifestyle, and environmental factors to customize therapies, enhance disease prevention, and improve overall health. Precision medicine ensures that treatments and wellness plans are as unique as the individuals receiving them. Recent technological advancements have further accelerated the progress of precision medicine. These technologies are key components of foundational research and clinical workflows, which are integral to precision medicine. They provide essential insights into the important differences between individuals, leading to the development of novel treatments for previously untreatable conditions. Here, we explore the core principles of precision medicine and the technologies driving its progress. To me, precision medicine means using the strategies and the tools of contemporary biology to attack the challenges. And for most people in precision medicine, it's the challenge of disease. But I use precision medicine to indicate uh, wellness and, and prevention of disease as well. Precision medicine is um, you know, a really exciting term. Obviously, we hear it a lot in the industry. And I think it's really moving away from what we've seen in the past in terms of healthcare, where you have a disease and here's a drug and you take that. It's really understanding more about the personal medical makeup and profile and then working with the physician to say, okay, this is the treatment path that will really work best for you. How do we personalized medicine, how do we make it more precise? How do we not just you know, throw SSRIs at a group of people and hope that they will be better or arthritis drugs or whatever, and that kind of targeted treatment, targeted care, et cetera, um, should be part of the equation. I think it's important to acknowledge that certainly precision medicine makes things more complex from a drug development approach. There's a lot more pieces that we need to look at and put together in terms of designing that precision medicine. But there's not a one-size-fits-all approach. That's not how biology works. We know that there are individuals with different genetic makeups, different proteomic makeups, different environmental factors. Um, and so that all needs to be put together in understanding how we develop the most effective precision medicine. But precision medicine isn't just a distant concept. In fact, it's already here, reshaping lives in profound ways. We sequenced my genome and saw I was very, very high risk for type 2 diabetes. Uh, uh, one of my colleagues here actually did the interpretation. And we then did some follow-up tests, and uh, during one of those visits, I saw my glucose was going off the charts. And that was very surprising, and um, it was right after a nasty viral infection, in fact. So what we think was that I was genetically at risk for this disease, and then the viral infection helped trigger it, meaning it's a combination of genetics plus environment did this. But it's because of my genome, I was on the alert for this. Uh, and then when I did get type 2 diabetes, I saw it right away. I got it under control initially, thanks to catching it early. I changed my lifestyle and kept it under control for quite a while. So my two children were diagnosed with a genetic disease in 1994. And I and my husband were very surprised, of course, like young parents are. The kids were seven and five. 
that they had a systemic rare disease that no one knew anything about. I was so naive, I thought you just go to the drugstore and get whatever you need for whatever disease you have. And we quickly found out, this was a couple days before Christmas, that in fact there was nothing being done on this disease in terms of research and so forth. So we networked, we were in the Boston area, we got a couple postdocs to lend us some bench space, we discovered the gene, we created a genetic test, we put a research consortium together and we had them meet and make a plan for how are we going to attack this disease such that we would be able to tame it. Whether it's a parent's mission to identify their child's rare genetic disorder, or a researcher's discovery of their genetic predisposition to diabetes, these stories highlight the impact and necessity of precision medicine on individual lives. However, Fulfilling the promise of precision medicine is reliant on various technologies that provide insights into an individual's health. These technologies and methods are all critical components of the precision medicine workflow. The rise and adoption of these innovations into our lives inspired Michael Snyder to write a book on the topic entitled Genomics and Personalized Medicine, What Everyone Needs to Know. At the time when we wrote the book, it was pretty new and people weren't comfortable. They didn't know a whole lot about the technology. It was just emerging. So I wrote the book in part to get people comfortable with the idea. This is going to be part of the future of medicine and they are getting more comfortable. Not 100%. Some are, some aren't. But I think people realize that if you sequence genomes, you can actually see people are high risk for certain things that actually can be very, very helpful, it can be life saving in fact. I think in the beginning what we saw is an excitement, especially around the human genome being completed, and we could talk about the various stages of completion, um, but anyway, completed enough for us to know that there were ways for us to intervene differently. And then a lot of um, conversation that didn't really have much action with it because there was a lot of hope and a lot of hype, I think. And then I think in some of the middle years, so I've been with this world about 30 years, and some, you know, 15 years ago, I think I started to see some actual precision medicine starting to happen. So friends with pancreatic cancer would be able to send the tumor to a specific place and get a reading on the, on the genes that were activated and inactivated and so forth. The tools for examining these things uh, are very much driven by automated DNA sequencing because you can use DNA sequencing now as an assay for many different things, for DNA, for RNA, and actually even for proteins as well, to be able to quantify them. And they're driven by tools that allow us to measure metabolites and lipids, generally mass spectrometry and so forth. It's driven by uh, tools that will allow us uh, to assess the brain, the body, and the gut microbiome. Those are the three axes of health. Numerous technological advancements have significantly improved our ability to understand and utilize precision medicine. The progress in genomics, proteomics, and other omics fields, along with sophisticated analytical tools, has fundamentally changed the way we diagnose and treat diseases. This multifaceted approach enables a comprehensive understanding of an individual's health. So the idea, I think, is one, humans are enormously complex, and the digital data we can get from big data has to be converted using systems biology approaches into the biological networks that underpin normal physiology and disease physiology and their dynamics, and those dynamics give us deep insights into the mechanisms that lead to wellness, lead to prevention, or lead to various kinds of diseases. We collect many types of data, and we're doing it for research. We're trying to understand how valuable different forms of data are, which data are most important. Uh, we do pull it into a complex database, and then we actually can filter it to figure out which ones are most meaningful for health, especially as we study many, many people. The idea with data-driven health is that we'll use big data to extract information from individuals that one optimized their health. And it's kind of like Michelangelo when he looked at a block of granite and said, 
David is in there and I just have to slip away the edges and he'll come out. And it's the same with you. You have the data for us to estimate your health, to predict its trajectory if you don't change your habits, and to optimize health if you choose to do that. And one analogy I like to use is that if you think of your health as a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, we typically take maybe five or six pieces in today's world. They don't measure very many things when you go to a physician's office. We're trying to measure more like five or 600 pieces out of that thousand piece picture so we can get a much clearer picture of your health and therefore see what's going on. Although technologies drive precision medicine forward, they are only one aspect of a broader framework. Another important element that is frequently overlooked is the incredible diversity between individuals. Understanding these differences is key to uncovering the factors that influence health and disease, leading to improved treatments, prevention strategies, and diagnostic tools for everyone. We've seen in a number of different clinical trial designs that there's underrepresentation of important patient populations. One of the key problems that we face when we lack diversity is in our clinical trial design. And that's one of the things that's really been talked about quite a lot in the research community lately is that when we go back and look at clinical trials and the enrollment of patients in those clinical trials, it doesn't really reflect the epidemiology of that disease, and that's a major problem. And one thing that we've seen, actually in a recent presentation in AACR last year, is that only 5% of African-American populations demonstrate actionable molecular profiles versus 12% in uh, patients with a European background. And so with that discrepancy there, we're really not understanding, again, how effective a drug would be in specific populations as they diversify. So African Americans, Asians, Latino, Latinas are not represented in the testing published literature the way that Caucasians are. And so they're not as easily diagnosed or treated or given the precision medicine they need. And that's a travesty in a country like ours with, you know, actually quite a lot of diversity that should be addressed. For precision medicine to be effective, a diverse range of individuals in clinical trials and varied biospecimens in preclinical research are necessary. Looking at diversity in biospecimens in an earlier stage will allow us to have more informed um, clinical guidelines that are then put into the clinical trial design. Secondly, I think that looking at a diversity of specimens will really help to reveal some of those genetic, proteomic, epigenetic, and other factors that may go unnoticed if we don't look at a broad enough diversity in the specimen selection that we're doing in those early stage research studies. As awareness of the importance of diversity continues to grow, so will the inclusivity of research and clinical practices. These changes will pave the way for a more effective and equitable healthcare system, leading to further advancements in precision medicine. The efforts of researchers across the globe, along with advances in key technologies, have led to a new era in precision medicine. This series features these important technologies, which include next generation sequencing, flow cytometry, organoids, spatial technologies, and essential tools for antibody discovery. Each part of the series will discuss a vital technology, how it is being applied, and how it is enhancing the precision medicine workflow highlighting how each of these tools works together to create a comprehensive approach for a more personalized healthcare solution. In the next segment, we'll explore how next generation sequencing is giving researchers important genetic information to personalize treatments based on the DNA of each individual.